Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Esselstyn. I asked you what recipes you think would be the best for preventing and reversing heart disease. Whole food, plant-based nutrition. And that's what we have here, all beautiful colors. I'm gonna make a delicious sweet potato chili with one of your favorite ingredients. Kale. Are all greens good? Bok choy, Swiss chard, <coughs> kale, collards, collard greens, beet greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, snappy cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, <laughs> cilantro, parsley, spinach, and arugula, and asparagus. Okay. That's great. Well, we're going to use kale, but we're going to stir it in at the end. Do, do you have a pressure cooker at home? This is the Instant Pot. It's my very favorite electric pressure You'd cooker. You'd have to ask my wife. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, she'll be on the show soon and we can ask, actually ask her. So we're going to start with three cups of fresh squeezed orange juice, two pounds of organic sweet potatoes. I didn't peel these because they're organic and there's a lot of fiber and nutrients in the skin. Please feel free to help me out any way you can. I've got three cups of kidney beans and you can use canned. I prefer to use salt free if I use cans. But once you get an electric pressure cooker, you can cook beans very, very quickly. A red onion, chopped. I just like the flavor of red onion. Two red bell peppers, chopped. chopped. Well, I, I think it's very exciting what you're doing here because when you're emphasizing whole food, plant-based nutrition, this is something that people should really start when they're young. Right. Because increasingly what we recognize is that, for instance, somebody doesn't, just doesn't wake up at age 65 with a heart attack. Sure. They work hard in all those preceding decades to lay the foundation for heart disease. Mm. For instance, we know, we know now from, uh, from autopsy studies of our GIs who died in Korea, at an average age of 20, 80% of these young GIs already had gross evidence of coronary disease you could see without a microscope. Not enough for their cardiac event yet. That study was then repeated, actually 45 years later. This time looking at young women and men wow. between the ages of 17 and 34 who had died of accidents, homicides, and suicides. And now the disease is ubiquitous. You graduate from high school in this country, you get a diploma. And then you also get the foundation for heart disease. <laughs> so should it be any great surprise that if you continue to eat this typical Western diet through your 20s and 30s and 40s, now we begin to see these actual clinical cardiac events. People don't realize that because I guess when they're in teens in their 20s, they're not feeling the symptoms of heart disease when they're young. Correct. It's too bad. Tomatoes, these are fire roasted salt-free tomatoes, One. two cans, and the spices. Tablespoon of salt-free chili powder, two teaspoons smoked paprika, smoked makes a difference. And I like it a little spicy, half a teaspoon of chipotle powder. This is so easy, you could do this. We already know you're a gourmet <laughs> Already know you already know how to cook. You make the most delicious oatmeal breakfast any doctor has ever made. I'm gonna show you, it's so easy to use an instant pot, even my husband knows how to do it. It's gonna make a little beeping noise to tell us that we've got the pot on correctly. And all you do is just push one button. I'm pushing this button called manual. I'm gonna put on about seven minutes of time. There we go. I mean, you've done surgery. How hard could this be, right? Well, and Kim will not be able to believe how smart I've gotten. So how important is the food to the prevention and reversal of heart disease? The truth be known, heart disease is nothing more than a toothless paper tiger that need never ever exist. And if it does exist, it need never ever progress. This is a completely benign, foodborne illness. Now, the, the point that I think we wanna make uh, about this is that, you know, it's so important that people recognize that there are certain foods that every time they cross our lips, we take a hit. And it's not a very big one, and the body's very resilient. So any injury we get from this food, you know, you don't really feel it. Right. You don't feel it when you're 10 years old, 15 years old, 17, 35. But now, with these accumulated hits, these accumulated injuries, the body begins to lose ground. And then we as physicians define these accumulated hits as it may be hypertension, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, it may be diabetes, it may be heart disease maybe strokes, it may even be cancer. And so it's so important, I think, to conceptualize, get across to the idea of the people that 
even though they don't feel the injury, there is injury. And what are, now we should talk next, what are the foods that cause this injury? It's a food that most Americans are eating most of their calories from, I bet. Absolutely. My, for instance, my dad had his first heart attack at age 43. By 63, he was type 2 diabetic. By 69, he had metastatic prostate cancer. My dad was an absolute living fossil of the ravages of Western nutrition. And there are certain foods that we should, should mention that are being avoided here today. For instance, the foods that injure are, for instance, oil. Right. Oil will injure the lining of your artery, whether it's olive oil, corn oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, coconut oil, palm oil, oil in a cracker. People just oil believe it's bread. such a health food. People believe that olive oil, olive oil, they believe olive oil is heart healthy. We don't use any oil at all on this show. Oil in a salad dressing, so we eliminate oil for these patients. Same thing is true with <clears throat> meat, fish, chicken, turkey, fowl. Animal protein injures endothelial mm -hmm. cells. What, what are the endothelial cells? Because Could you please explain? Because I'm sure that people have not heard yeah, that term before. The, the innermost lining of our artery is a magic layer, one cell layer thick, and that's called the endothelium. Mm -hmm. And the endothelium is really the life jacket and the guardian of our blood vessels because it manufactures an absolutely magic molecule of gas that has marvelous functions that protects our blood vessels. What are the functions of nitric oxide? Keeps all those cellular elements in our bloodstream flowing smoothly like Teflon rather than Velcro. Number two, nitric oxide is the strongest vasodilator in the body. Mm -hmm. When you climb stairs, the arteries to your heart, the arteries to your legs, they widen, they dilate. Number three, nitric oxide prevents the wall of the artery from becoming thickened, stiff, or inflamed, protects you from getting high blood pressure, hypertension. And number four, most important, an adequate safe amount of nitric oxide protects you from ever making blockages or plaque. So really everybody who has cardiovascular disease in this country has so destroyed and injured and compromised the capacity of their endothelial cells to make nitric oxide, they don't have enough to protect themselves. And the exciting thing is, this is not cancer. Right. So that when you get people to really understand this and they stop the foods that are injuring their, nitric, their endothelial cells, back comes the nitric oxide. The disease is halted and fascinatingly, many times, reversed. Dr. Esselstyn, you mentioned that heart disease has already manifested in very young people, but they don't seem to have symptoms yet. How do we get them to be excited about changing their diet to prevent heart disease even though they already have it and don't know? How do we reach these younger people? Well, I think, <clears throat> I think they ought to be told about the outcomes that we have in research for one thing. They ought to be, on a, be fully aware of the fact that if they don't change, here is what they're going to see coming down the pike for them. Uh, often you can get the, <clears throat> the, the boys to begin arrested when you understand that, <laughs> that er coming. erectile dysfunction is, uh, mm -hmm. is caused by this typical American diet. Well, that, that sure makes me want to eat better. <laughs> what can I tell you? So we're going to finish cooking this recipe, and when we come back, we're going to make a delicious recipe from Dr. Esselstyn's cookbook, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. In the meantime, we're going to show you a great clip of Dr. Esselstyn from the documentary Forks Over Knives. Despite the apparent success of the dietary approach, some critics say eating this way is extreme. Now, with the Western diet, this guarantees there are going to be, what, a half a million people in this country this year who will have to have the front half of their body divided, their heart exposed, then veins will be taken from their leg and sewed on their heart. Some people would call that extreme. Dr. Esselstyn has now successfully treated over 250 patients with heart disease using almost exclusively a whole foods, plant-based diet. Heart disease, as far as I'm concerned, is an absolutely toothless paper tiger that need never ever exist. And if it does exist, it need never ever progress. So I'm back in the kitchen with Dr. Esselstyn and we're now gonna make a recipe from his book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, The Revolutionary Scientifically Proven Nutrition-Based Cure. The recipes in this book are delicious, by the way. 
I have to thank my, my wife for that. They are they are <laughs> so good. So we're gonna make one of my favorite recipes, and I know you've had it. It's the beet soup. Oh. You like that one? Terrific. Okay, so we're gonna use the Vitamix blender. Makes it so. E oh, well, wait a minute. You know what that beet means? Something else is ready. That's right. The chili that we made earlier is ready. Now, I don't want you to be scared, Dr. Esselstyn, but it's so easy to release the pressure on this Instant Pot. You just push the slow knob like that. Now, you know, I teach at a lot of spas, and they give you these facials for several hundred dollars. <laughs> but look, with an Instant Pot, you can get a facial for free. All these antioxidants from the beans and the tomatoes. So we're starting with some beets. These have already been cooked. You know, it's really easy to find already cooked beets now in just about every market. I'm gonna double this recipe because I love it. So I'm gonna use about six beets. How are these for your endothelial? Oh, they're nitrates. Nitrates are wonderful. Because <clears throat> when you swallow nitrates, or actually when you chew nitrates, and they mix with the facultative anaerobic bacteria that reside in the <laughs> Crips and okay. Blues. Facultative anaerobic bacteria, can yeah. you speak English? Because <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to know what that means. <laughs> yeah, when they when they mix with your mouth bacteria that come out okay. of the, your tongue, those bacteria reduce the nitrates in your mouth to nitrites. You swallow the nitrites, and your gastric acid reduces the nitrites further to nitric oxide, which is what we want. Right. That's the magic molecule that protects us, because as you get to be older, over 50, your usual endothelial cells now are only making 50% of the nitric oxide they can make when you were 25. That doesn't mean that the old carcasses let you down because with chewing nitrates, nitrites, gastric acid, no pill nitric for, no, oxide. No pill for nitrates, nitrites, <laughs> not, right? Not, you got to get it from the food. Not in our practice. Right, good. Whoops. Two oranges that I've peeled. You can just throw that in or you can eat it. Oh, very, very good. See, you didn't win an Olympic gold medal for nothing. Look how you got it in there right away. And that wasn't even your sport. So one of the things I like to do in every recipe, even if it's not called for, if I'm using a lemon or a lime or an orange, I like to always add some of the zest. I just think that adds a lot of flavor. We do have the zest from one lemon that the recipe did call for and about three tablespoons of lemon juice and one of my favorite ingredients, fresh mint. So we're putting it all in the Vitamix. We're just gonna Blend that up. That was quick and easy. This is such a beautiful color. And it smells, oh, look at this. Wow. This is beautiful like to garnish with a little fresh mint. Uh, Isn't that, is this what it looks like at home? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see if this is what it tastes like at home. Okay. I'm sure Anne's is better, but this is her recipe. This is mm. beautiful. Mm. You got it. Thank you. All right, so let's finish up the kale soup. Or should I say the chili? I like to put the greens in at the end because otherwise they get too wilted. Yeah. So the idea is as much greens as you can. Don't you think we're supposed to eat these about six times a day? Isn't that what I heard you once say? <laughs> if possible. Well, they're they're so magnificent for their antioxidant properties. Their properties to bring back the endothelial progenitor cells, which are so key in this whole process. They uh, they do just wonderful things for, for all the natural sort of defense mechanisms of the body that really uh, protect our vascular system. There's nothing that can beat the green leafy vegetables so for this. So, if it's really true what you say, and I believe you, that you can not only prevent heart disease, but largely mm -hmm. reverse it with a whole food plant-based diet, why isn't it being treated this way? Well, there's a lot of problems, and it really basically starts, believe it or not, with our medical schools. Wow because the medical schools are not teaching physicians really anything about nutrition. Well, what about your colleagues that say, oh, I can't get my patients to eat this way? You know, I'm so glad you asked that question. That really has to do with what we call adherence. Now... <clears throat> Who wouldn't eat this? This is beautiful. That's right. delicious. If you're going to get somebody to make a change, uh, change next to religion and sex is probably nothing as personal 
as food. And if you're going to have somebody really change their food and understand that the food is what has caused their disease, you've got to show them respect if you expect them to change. We have a program at the Wellness Institute where I, that I direct where we know that patients, since 85% of them come from outside the state of Ohio, that they can't stay there for days at a time. So we have synthesized a very intensive single day, five and a half hour uh, seminar where these patients with cardiovascular disease are going to learn all about what they did that created the disease and how they can become empowered as the locus of control to halt and to reverse this disease. Can anyone join this program anywhere? How can they get in touch with you and find all out that, more about the program? Well, my secretary, uh, Jacqueline Fry, <clears throat> is responsible for all the registration of our uh, program, and all they have to do is call her office and they'll find her very gracious. What's your website? Uh, <laughs> DrEsselston.com. That's your yeah. name. We know that heart disease is the number one killer of men and women, but was it always that way in this country? Well, interesting. Uh, it, uh, as, as long as we've really been looking at this in the last 30, 40, 50 years, there's no question that cardiovascular disease has been the leading killer of men and women in Western civilization. And that's very dis discouraging when you think that sadly the uh, medicine, cardiovascular medicine is really now turned into a cardiovascular industry mm. because it now accounts for over 45% of Medicare and it's the entitlements that are pulling this country into debtor's prison because we have not yet absolutely shown the public what they can do to halt and eliminate these common chronic killing diseases whether it's heart disease, whether it's strokes, whether it's hypertension, whether it's diabetes, these diseases absolutely we, we don't have to have. And the resolution of them is so ridiculously simplistic by sharing with the public what is the nutritional literacy that will allow them to prevent themselves from ever having these illnesses. So to sum it up, we want to tell everyone, prevent, not stent, and eat your greens. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> Let me know how you like the chili, Dr. Esselstyn. Sure. It's got all the ingredients that you said were the sweet potato chili with dynamite. kale. Thank Just you. dynamite. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with our sweet endings, a dessert recipe from Dr. Esselstyn's Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. So I'm back in the kitchen with Dr. Esselstyn, and we're going to make a recipe from the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. Look at these beautiful photos. These are the uh, chocolate-filled strawberries. Dr. Russell, since did you know that I used to be a pastry chef? I did. Oh, good. Well, that's why we're going to do dessert. We're going to do a dessert recipe. So it says over 125 delicious, life-changing, plant-based recipes by Anne Cryle Esselstyn and Jane Esselstyn. So who are these two women? Uh, Anne is my wife. Jane is my daughter. So the whole family's in on this healthy eating thing? We have four children. Okay. And those four children have given us ten grandchildren. Okay. So the whole family together now is 18. 18. And uh, everybody seems to be plant-based. Can I be an honorary Esselstyn now <laughs> no. that I'm thin like an Esselstyn? If you smile pretty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's great. So the whole family eats this way. That's, yeah. all, that's wonderful. Well, I think it's probably the greatest gift that you can give your children. Sure. Is in a lifetime of, of eating in a way that they will avoid chronic illness. I couldn't have said it better myself. And that doesn't mean they have to suffer from any kind of deprivation. You have delicious dessert recipes in this book, and we're going to make one of my favorite, which is the banana saucer. Let's do it. We're using this Yonana's machine, and it makes it so easy. We have some frozen bananas that we've peeled in advance. They were ripe, and we have some frozen strawberries, just because I think it's pretty when you mix the fruits together. And it doesn't have to be banana. We could have used mango, but I just happen to love bananas. <laughs> is really good for your exercise as yeah. well. <laughs> a little bit frozen maybe too right. hard. We'll put some strawberries in. Yeah. Actually it's really I better I better check it out to be sure it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. There we go. There's the strawberries. Ooh, that's good. I got it. Oop. There we go. And move that bowl aside. 
know. Thank you for helping. <laughs> now, as delicious as a bowl of ice cream made with just fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit, I like making it into a little sundae and putting more fresh fruit on top. Now, I hear your wife, Anne, makes it a little bit uh, more special. What does she put on it? Well, she has occasionally uh, put a little chocolate balsamic. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, let's, let's dig in, if you don't mind sharing with me. <laughs> I'm mm. excited to do this. It's so good. It's just fruit. I mean, would it be okay if your patient ate this for breakfast? Well, uh, it would be okay, but I think for breakfast, I'd like them to have it during the day. Right. But uh, I think it, uh, for breakfast, I'd like them to have the uh, the old-fashioned rolled oats. Right. Because they are so strong with polyphenolic characteristics and the ability to help lower uh, cholesterol. I actually eat vegetables for breakfast. Is that okay? That's wonderful. Good. Yeah. But this would make an excellent dessert. <laughs> it would. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. How come I'm the only one digging in then? <laughs> well, mm. I don't want to be greedy. <laughs> you could never be accused of that, Dr. Esselstyn. If you had to tell our viewers one thing to really help drive this message home about yeah. how important it is to eat healthfully and feed their family healthily, you mentioned you have 18 people in your family, four children, 10 grandchildren. What would you say? Well, everybody has to look at their own family history. And when they suddenly look carefully at their grandparents or those who are over 55, 65, and so forth, how many of them are taking drugs or medication? How many of them have perished from a common chronic killing disease? It's estimated that about 80% of these common chronic killing diseases need to never ever exist. And the answer to these is never gonna be a pill, a procedure, or an operation, but the answer can be when we in the medical profession have the will, the grit, and the determination to share with the public what is the nutritional literacy that will empower them to avoid these illnesses. Right. It's amazing that the uh, cure is actually at the end of our knife and fork. I think it's so, so terribly important to share with the public and your audience that really it's, uh, illness is not a question of simply genes. Right or stress, or just the luck of the draw. It's so powerful to think that when we get the public to understand the importance of nutritional literacy, they are now empowered as the locus of control to halt and prevent these common chronic killing diseases. Thank you for having me. And Dr. Esselstyn, thank you so much for being here. You really helped explain that heart disease never need exist, and if it need exist, it need never progress, and that we really can take control of our health destiny starting in the kitchen with what we eat. And if you want to know what to eat, consider getting the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook or Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. If you want to get in touch with Dr. Esselstyn, his website is dresselstyn.com. And speaking of what we eat, we'll come back in a minute and show you the three delicious recipes that we made today. So just to recap the three delicious healthy recipes we made today, in our Instant Pot Electric Pressure Cooker, a sweet potato chili with kale, from the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease book, an endothelial enhancing beet soup, and from the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook, a scrumptious, luscious banana strawberry soft serve made with our Yonanas machine. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Healthy Living. I'm Chef AJ, and I make healthy taste delicious. Love and kale. <sighs> to your health. <laughs> mm.